Hello, everybody. It's Michael Hart again from TrueLiteracy.in. This is the third in our series of videos about these incredibly cool uh, Microsoft Ed Tech tools. And once again, I have my esteemed colleague and guest, Rachel Berger, here to talk with us about a brand new one. Rachel is a, a consultant for my, uh, Microsoft in their specifically in their dyslexia and learning disabilities community uh, area. So uh, welcome, Rachel. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Glad to be back. So today I understand you're going to be talking about a cool new tool called Office Lens. Yes. And what we've learned in these videos is I get out of the way and you share your screen and we're going to walk through it in a way to make sure that People can follow it step by step, and by the end of the video, they're going to be actually able to know how to figure out how to use this themselves. Right, right. That is the hope. Um, okay, so let's share my screen and get to showing you how Office Lens works. Okay, let me get my toolbar out of the way here. We're going to start out by showing you a quick video on how Office Lens works. Right now you'll notice that I have subtitling happening in the bottom. Um, this is a really neat feature that you can set up and maybe we'll show you a video on that later. Uh, it's, it's presentation translator. So right now it's subtitling and captioning um, because this video happens to be embedded in PowerPoint. Okay, so without further ado, this is Office Lens, and I want to show you um, what it looks like here so that when you go into the App Store, you have an idea visually um, what you're looking for. This is a Microsoft product, and it works with any Android, iPhone, iPad, or computer that snaps photographs. So I also use it with my Microsoft Surface. Um, so we're going to look at a quick video here on how it works, and then we'll talk about it. Move down. No net. Move up. Ready. Document. Image. Immersive reader. Button. Scan. Im scanning text. Geography. The study of Earth's landforms is. Okay, let's pause right there. So I probably just blew your mind. Um, what this does is from any phone um, or, like I said, iPad, you can snap a photo of a document. And actually, also, you can do this with a um, whiteboard or handwritten notes. And you snap a photo of the document, and you can run OCR, which is Optical Character Recognition. It'll scan the document, and then you can have it loaded into OneNote um, in your computer or your desktop there. Or you can use it on your person. Um, to have that accessibility pathway. So again, think about your middle school, high school students, or even adults who always have some device on them. Um, if you use Office Lens and scan that document, you can simply just uh, pop your earbuds in um, and listen to um, Immersive Reader create another accessibility pathway for that document. So now I'm gonna show you, we're gonna escape out of PowerPoint here. And I'm going to show you OneNote and how my, one of the ways my son uses it. So we are now in OneNote Notebook. Again, this is desktop for me. And you can see that all these little things I have timestamps on. So I'm going to show you for the purpose of this demonstration um, a, a language arts assignment my son came home with. And he often gets these multi page assignments um, pretty long. You can see that it's um, the print is small, the text is closely kerned together. Even though my son has had um, his remediation specifically to dyslexia, he still finds this to be uh, straining to read. And so, uh, let, me, let me stop you there for one second because that's a super super important point that we run across every day in our schools. Yes. Just because a child has been successfully gone through some kind of a a basic reading program and they become somewhat proficient as a reader, it still doesn't mean that when they get up into the higher grades and the demands from the environment increase, it doesn't mean that they're not going to struggle. So we have to continue to find ways to build things like this so that we can 
mitigate that issue that is lifelong, quite frankly. I love this. Thank you. Thank you for adding that perspective because as a parent, um, when he first came home with this and was what I would describe as a, a hot mess over it, I really didn't understand what was going on other than he just didn't want to read it. Um, but I also understand that whether he's sight reading with his eyes or what I call ear reading, he's still comprehending text and he still has to process that. So naturally the question at that time for me was, okay, Trig, regardless of you wanting to read it or not, you gotta read it, it's your assignment. So you can sight read or you can ear read, which, which would you like today? And at that moment he chose, I'd like to ear read it. So, you know, that was a sign for me that after he'd processed everything all day long in the classroom, he was just too fatigued to be able to read it visually and process it. So that was him telling me, I need, I need a, a different methodology. And so here you go. We snapped photos. You can tell that these are photographs. This was done using Office Lens. And then we loaded it into um, OneNote Desktop. And here we go. We're going to click on Immersive Reader. And just like we've become familiar with, it's popped a skin over top of this page. And I can simply push play. A princess can be a lot of trouble sometimes. Mystery. And away we go. It's immediate. Um, also, what's really wonderful is that we can um, click on our words and we've got picture dictionary and everything else that we have um, come to be familiar with here with our tools and features. It follows. So, you know, let's say that I wanted to scan my document, but again, that document isn't my native language. I'm fatigued. I prefer to read it in another language. Well, let's just go ahead and translate that. And there we go and we can read it aloud in another language. So that's a little funny there. Okay, so again, we have all of these tools and features, click of a button to increase the accessibility, and again, to help the students or an individual personalize how do they want to consume that content, because it's your choice at the end of the day. And so I, I would suspect there was a time, there was a little bit of a learning curve for your son, but with your support and your supervision, he was able to kind of take command and make these kinds of decisions based on what he felt like he needed at that time. So it's a form of self-advocacy, quite frankly, and being aware of the tools and being, you know, kind of shepherded by you and doing what, you know, moms should do for kids that still struggle with learning how to read or reading at higher levels. Yeah, um, he knows a little bit more how to do it himself. And, and a lot of times that for any child, much less a student with learning differences, is about the repetition. So the more frequently we do it, the more he learns how to do it on his own. And to be quite honest now, um, instead of loading it into the desktop and listening to it on the desktop version, he just listens to it on his phone. So, um, I mean, because it's always there on his, on his body. Either way, when you load the information in, it's available to you either whichever pathway you choose because it's there in the cloud. Um, you know, and then one thing that I think is really important to point out is students need to have the choice um, to utilize tools whenever they want. It shouldn't be something that is forced upon them. Um, it, it's their choice to use a tool when they want, because if we are to um, force a child to use, let's say, dictation or um, the speech-to-text features here, we stigmatize them in a classroom if we're not allowing them to choose and determine when and how and where do they want to use those accessibility features. Mm -hmm. So just wanting to say, you know, a lot, a lot um, we can go really far in supporting a student if we, one, expose them, but two, enable them to choose when and how they want to use features. Mm -hmm. Good, good. I have one really pragmatic question. In the very beginning, you said uh, we get the app from the app store. Is that the Microsoft app store? Or it's a Microsoft. Yeah, go ahead. No, is, it, is that the right place for them to go and search for it and find it? So you go in your app store. And it is a Microsoft app, so Microsoft Office Lens, and it's free. So whatever whatever your app store is, whether it's iPhone or Android, whatever, that's where you go and you search for it, and that's where you yep. find it. Right. And if you like, I can pop that picture back up for folks so that okay. they can see. Again, it's orange there, the orange backdrop, and a camera aperture ring there. Okay, great. Yeah.
All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. Why don't you let's back out and we'll say uh, thanks again, and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about what we're going to do next in our next video. Thank you very much. Uh, so that to me is just uh, it's just a layer upon layer upon layer of great stuff that's available to our kids now. We got to get the word out. So I'm really grateful for you to spend your time to help us, and uh, I appreciate everything you do. So we're going to bring you back sometime soon. And we're going to talk about another tool that was also incredibly powerful in terms of helping your son kind of circumnavigate his issues with dysgraphia. Yeah. And, and I think that's going to be another really cool tool because it's obviously such a major issue for so many of our dyslexic kids. So we're going right. to be back soon with that. And I'll make sure that everybody knows either through email or some kind of a, an announcement. And in the meantime, uh, please enjoy this video as, as often as you'd like, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much.